we are going to turn any dynamic video into an immersive 3D video. Our 3D video supports changing camera viewpoints and focal lens at any frame. Or explore the dynamic scene in 3D with space-time view synthesis. Of course, it also works for real, highly dynamic videos. And bring all your visual memories to life. The rendering is efficient and runs at an interactive rate with a single GPU. Wow! With our method, we can easily convert any 2D video into a stereo video that can be viewed with a stereo glasses. This is great, but how does it work? There has been impressive progress in 3D reconstructions and view synthesis. These methods work exceptionally well when we capture the scene of interest from a wide range of viewpoints. But then, for casual videos, we often have much more limited viewpoints. Why is that an issue? Large viewpoint variations provide clear cues for 3D reconstructions. In contrast, limited viewpoint variations often lead to erroneous reconstruction due to ambiguity. As a result, state-of-the-art radiance field methods fail to reconstruct the static background in casual videos. In comparison, our method produces more plausible view synthesis results. Here is how. Given an input video, we first estimate the dense video depths and camera poses using off-the-shelf methods. Our idea is to model the static scene components using a collection of 3D plans represented by view-dependent textures and planar geometry. Given an arbitrary target viewpoint, we can render the color and depth images with back-to-front composition of the WAP 3D plans. But why does it work? Our work is related to multi-plane image representation capable of modeling things with complex geometry and appearance. Our representation is more flexible in that our plans do not need to be frontal parallel to a reference viewpoint. It's also related to 3D Gaussian splatting. Our plans can be viewed as collapsing the 3D volume into a 2D-oriented plan. The simplified model produces a more plausible reconstruction for videos with limited viewpoint variations. But then there's a problem. Our world is not just a collection of perfect plans. Let's assume that this is an actual surface and our planar approximation. When viewing a specific 3D point, the ray intersects at one location on our plan. But something horrible happens. Nani? Another ray pointing at the same 2D point ends up intersecting at a different location on our plan. To account for the inaccuracy of our approximation, we use view-dependent displacement and appearance, parametrized by the coefficients of spherical harmonics. Here's the comparison between before and after the view-dependent modeling. We model dynamic contents as preference 3D point clouds and render them via forward splatting. Given a target viewpoint and time, we take the rendered static and dynamic contents and compose them to form our final image. Let's see some comparisons. Compared with robust dynamic gradient fields, our dynamic components are much sharper. Compared with 4D Gaussian splatting, our result produces significantly fewer visual artifacts. Compared to Dynabo, our results show similar or better visual quality while being 600 times faster to render. This is awesome, except our method still makes a ton of mistakes. Here, the motion segmentation fails to mask out the hand as dynamic components, creating this ghost effect. Due to the limited viewpoints, we see distortion artifacts when rendering from a viewpoint further away from the original trajectory. Despite the challenges, we are super excited about the step forward in making 3D visual memories more accessible to all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.